a guinea core is privileged for Pochuk Sanakoit Shah. I would like to thank the Holocaust Education Trust Ireland for inviting me as president to join you all on this important day, during which we remember the 11 million people, including 6 million Jews, who lost their lives in the concentration camps of Europe. In 2000, Ireland signed the Stockholm Declaration, and in doing so, as a nation, we undertook, along with other European partners and the wider international community, to ensure that the victims of the Holocaust would be remembered. Today, gathered as we are together, we give witness to that commitment. We are honored that some of the survivors of the Holocaust are with us this evening. They have, over the years, acted as witnesses to the horrors of the past, and through their actions they have helped to educate successive generations about the brutal consequences that flow from individuals, groups, cultures, belief systems being chosen as targets for hate and even genocide. May I personally acknowledge and honour those survivors present here this evening. Susie Diamond, Jan Kaminsky and Tommy Reichenthal, I thank you for coming here and for all that you do and have done to ensure that we do not forget the horrific events that constituted the slaughter of millions of persons across Europe and the concentrated elimination of specified minorities. Nor should we neglect how attitudes and assumptions left unchecked made their own preparation and contribution to these events that we recall. Seventy years after the Holocaust, it remains an atrocity which we regard and remember with horror, revulsion and disbelief. We owe so much to the survivors of that atrocity, who continue to bear witness to the terrible inhumanity that can emerge from hatred, prejudice and intolerance. It is their testimonies over the years their memoirs, diaries, novels, poems, interviews and personal accounts, however painful, which have ensured that a terrible stain on human history has not become forgotten or diluted across the distance of years and decades which now separate us from those darkest days of the Second World War. Their personal recollections remind us of the many, many individual stories which make up the narrative of the Shoah, the ruptured families, the lost potential, and the brutal assault on culture and identity, as well, of course, as the courage, generosity of spirit, tenacity, and great will to survive, which are also part of the Holocaust narrative. We are approaching a time, however, when the Holocaust will become a chapter that has passed from the possibility of personal recall into history. It will remain important that future generations learn about and comprehend that chapter in world history, that awful chapter, and all of the hateful assumptions and practices that preceded it, assumptions and practices that now seek to re-emerge in so many places to continue the prejudice, discrimination and persecution which led to the great failure of humanity that was the Shoah. In the decades to come, the literature of the Holocaust and indeed its representation in film and in other media, as well as the preservation of the archives of the period, will then take on an even greater importance. The late French philosopher Paul Ricoeur has said that to be forgotten is to die twice, and as humanitarians and fellow human beings, we have a duty to preserve the memory of the many people who had their lives taken so shockingly and so tragically, and that we commit to remembering and drawing lessons from the consequences of actions that have taken place, and from actions that should have happened, but did not, from silences that should have been broken, actions that should have been taken and were not. And at the same time, let us remember two such exceptions as the actions of Hubert Butler and his friends, whose actions must be never forgotten for their courage and their humanity without borders. It is also critical that we focus on the question 
of how best to ensure an ethical remembrance of the Holocaust. We know that engaging with these horrifying events of the past could never be easy. It involves a complex and sensitive treatment of the manifold narratives, memories, hearts, legacies, and emotions of all those affected by such a past. For some, the burden of that past may be too heavy, too painful to remember. However, forgetting the past, affecting any amnesia can in itself be a far more harmful and damaging act, and it is surely through remembering consciously and ethically that we acquire the potential to gain release from past wrongs and acquire also the resolution to anticipate and identify any revivals of hate and exclusion. What ought we to remember? What ought we seek to transcend? And what calls for ongoing scholarship? These are the questions which must lie at the heart of any aspiration for the fullness of life. On this Holocaust Memorial Day, let us all commit to a will to remember ethically. In doing so, we must all be committed to, to the task of facing, opposing and exposing any and all incipient forms of racism, distortion of sacred texts and invitations to hate, such as led, for example, to the recent atrocities in Paris. While this is a solemn occasion of remembrance, during which we are commemorating a horrific set of events in European and world history. We must also remember that there is light. There is good to be found in the world, and there are good people who will stand against hatred, destruction, and intolerance, and who will carry the torch of truth and light with them. So as we remember the hateful discrimination that led to the Holocaust and the horrors of that period, we must remember also today what emerged from that tragic episode of European history. In particular, the resolution of the people of Europe to seek to found a new community of nations and peoples founded on the principles and values of human rights and human dignity. Marfocal Square is min la mola hua ta gakta ne fi pochok i gomoren die nu. Ta fissam go wil tros fada korriti fe golodin in o mast le vehen shotran ona. Agas gaim buikas livas shen, fa privlet war tam sehene fe ran fachak sinimak tri hafakuk shah. So as I have said, may I conclude by commending everyone participating in today's commemoration. So many of you have travelled long distances to be present here this evening, and I thank you for that. It has been a great privilege to be part of this event again. Gurumila mahaki galayar.